Hello there. Happy Thursday. I'm not typically joining you today over my lunch break, but I am today. I'm at our Torrance office um, helping out today because we had some people off and it's been super fun. And I really wanted to highlight some of the things that I've been reading this week. If we haven't met, my name is Julie Hirschberg. I am a neurologic physical therapist, the owner, founder of Reactive Therapy and Wellness um, in the Los Angeles area. We actually have two locations. Today I'm in Torrance, and then we also have a location in West LA. And um, I love to join you every week and just share some of what we're reading and doing. And um, this, the past couple of weeks, really, I've been doing a lot of reading uh, because we have a workshop coming up on functional neurologic disorders. Um, my favorite topic. And so Brittany Kim and I are going to um, host a workshop. It is next week, September 13th. Um, if you're not already signed up, you should get yourself joined, signed up. It's for healthcare providers. And we're going to provide and share the secrets, our strategies are not really secrets, they're strategies uh, to help you get really great outcomes with people with FND. And um, as I've been diving into the literature, there's so many interesting things that are coming up. And I really wanted to share this article. So um, I'm sharing, uh, oh, it kind of comes up a little funny there. I'm not sure that you can fully read it. Um, this is a screenshot from Twitter. So to my fellow healthcare providers, if you're not already on Twitter um, or you think it's for old people like me, uh, get on it and follow your favorite researchers because then you get first glance at this research and particularly um, Matt Bancroft, who is actually the second Matthew, sorry, um, uh, second author on this paper um, out of the Diego Koski lab. This is... Um, in London, um, uh, shared a really great um, Twitter summary of this article. This this article was actually just a letter in the um, journal Neurology, Neurosurgery, and and Psychiatry. The letter is called Postural Misperception: A Biomarker of Persistent Postural Perceptual Dizziness. Let's see, it was just published and he just shared this really lovely Twitter summary. And he even said in the Twitter summary that there's more in the Twitter summary than the actual paper because it's such a short note. So I'm going to share with you some of the Twitter summary because the visuals are fantastic. So let me start here. Um, make sure that I, that I got it and i i don't know if you'll be able to read it okay i think you can kind of get this so um this was a thread that he shared just at the end of last month and it's popped up in my twitter feed so um talking about 3pd so we talk about 3pd a lot um it's a form of functional dizziness and um one of the things that is tricky about 3PD is not really having some um, consistent clinical um, findings across the board. Um, so biomarkers, and this is across all of, neuro all of neurology, all of neurologic disorders, are looking for biomarkers, ways to um, distinguish certain disorders from other disorders um, and help give us prognosis as well. So this study was really interesting the way that they designed it. And what you can see here is um, that, you know, 3PD has perceptual in it, right? So it's persistent postural perceptual dizziness. So having a good measure of a perceptual impairment, and I think this is really important because perception is still, it, it's not a in your head, it's not a made up thing. It's still an actual problem when you have a perceptual impairment. We don't have good ways to measure that. So he's arguing that this is really important to have a way to measure, to distinguish 3PD from other conditions because we know there are a lot of conditions that cause dizziness, that might cause vertigo. How do we know it's 3PD? So they did this in a really cool way, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it. But they, they did have a small group. Um, I have the article up here as well. Um, they had 19 people with 3PD. 
and they were classified um, according to the International Classification of Vestibular Disease. They had 10 people with a bilateral vestibular apathy. So bilateral vestibular hypofunction confirmed with objective vestibular function testing. So this is what I think is really cool is they've got these groups. So 19 people with 3PD, 10 with bilateral um, vestibular hypofunction. And they had uh, 10 healthy controls. So they really had three groups. I think this makes this so strong so that you can look at what does somebody who has a documented vestibular loss, like a hypofunction, bilateral vestibular hypofunction, what does um, a person without any dizziness look like, and what is a person with 3PD? So they um, had these people stand and they measured their sway and they measured their perception of sway because we should be measuring this, right? So if we have a disorder, an impairment in perception, we need a way to measure it. I think it's brilliant. Um, so then they compared. By the way, for the healthy controls, they actually put them on the phone pad so that they would have some sway. And this was measured in force plate. So that's kind of how, how, um, how he starts in describing this. Um, let me make sure I get the next piece here. Um, okay, I think so. So the, um, the participants verbally rate their perceived instability. So this is one way that we measure perception, right? So we have people verbally rate their instability, zero being completely steady and 10 being unsteady so that I would fall. Very much like the RPE, the rate of perceived exertion, but it's a rate of perceived stability. I've talked about this before. I really love using this um, to gauge treatment as well. So this is a great assessment. Um, so let's see the results here. This is so cool that he shared this on Twitter. So I'm literally just sharing the Twitter screenshots with you all here. Uh, Right, the perceived stability. Let me make sure I get the right ones here. This is, oh, it's a little bit cut off, so you might not see the side. So let me pull up um, my picture here. So along the y-axis is the perceived instability. Along the x-axis is observed instability, so based on the force plate. So um, what? What? let me give you the colors here. So the um, folks with 3PD are in the red. The, um, the folks with uh, bilateral vestibular hypofunction in the blue and the control in the black. So what you can see here is that the folks with 3PD um, both perceived, um, they had a, a tendency to perceive uh, much more sway with having less actual sway measured on the force plate. So this is a really, this is, this is a, you can see, you can see that there's some outliers there, right? Particularly, there's some people in the blue, the bilateral vestibular hypofunction that um, had a higher number, maybe even some of the healthy controls had a higher number. So maybe not everybody's perception is on, on par, but for sure the folks with 3PD, and this isn't surprising because it is uh, partially postural and perceptual. They had a, their their perception of sway was very different from their actual sway. Isn't this fascinating? Ali is commenting. This is fascinating. I think this is so fascinating. So um, that was one image that he shared. Um, and then let me go to the next image. I hope you can see this. So interesting to me. Okay, um, so this is um, this is really interesting. So then what they did is <clears throat> they had them perform a novel task, and I kind of like this novel task, where they asked the person to replicate their perceived sway. So um, replicate how they um, uh, felt their body was moving. I'm not exactly sure what they said here, um, but what you can see is on the top, and hopefully you can see this. I feel like you cannot see the blue though. Um, I wonder if I can like change that at all. I wanna like swipe it over. I'll, I'll have to describe to you the, the blue, which is the folks with bil um, bilateral vestibular hypofunction. But in 3PD, 
you can see the observed sway. So on a force plate, um, fairly small, but re reproducing. So when they would imagine um, thinking about how much they swayed, so their perception of swaying, you can see it's much larger. They don't match. And what happens when our perception of our movement does not match the actual movement? We get an error. And so this is what I talked about last week. I'm going to talk about it again tomorrow, Friday, in her Facebook Live, because this is so fascinating to me, what occurs with our predictive brain. Um, and when our perception is different than what's actually observed, the errors that we get. And then, you know, why why is that too, right? So then we wanna look at kind of sensory organization and, and sensory integration too. So I'm just gonna to describe to you, and and most um, physical therapists that have worked in the vestibular world kind of know what it might look like. I, I'm sorry that the blue is cut off here, um, but on the right-hand side are those with bilateral vestibular hypofunction. So when you have a bilateral vestibulopathy, you have a lot of sway <laughs> in standing um, because you're not getting good input from either ear. Um, and so what you see is the observed matches the actual sway very closely. So it's a big contrast to uh, 3PD where the person with bilateral vestibulopathy has a lot of sway occurring um, in, uh, in the observed task. So let's go to one more here and hopefully we can see this too. Um, so let me give you what's like, um, cut off here. On the top are the um, healthy controls, in the middle, bilateral vestibular hypofunction, and on the bottom, 3PD. So here um, was looking at the ratios. And what they found is people with bilateral vestibulopathy actually accurately produced their actual sway, as did healthy controls. But the people with 3PD overproduced their sway. And get this, on average, twice the level of their actual sway, twice the level. So to me, if this was, you know, we do measurements, right, of joint position error, it's, a, it's perception, like where is your body in space? Where's your head in space? Um, this is kind of like, where's your posture in space and what's the error? So they're, they're off two times, right? So that's a big perceptual error. And you can imagine how hard that would make it to move and how hard it would be to uh, maintain your posture upright if you had 3PD. Um, now here is the very last